Look to put the ball up every time but one. Here's Sorge now after the flag. With the great breakaway speed, should have it up for the first down. Stuart Schweiger came up from his free safety spot to make the tackle. And see if Schweiger doesn't, if Schweiger doesn't make the tackle, this could go the distance. So many times you say that, and you say, "Well, now come on." This man run a 10-0-0 wind dated hundred meters. Schweiger steps up and right there, and if he doesn't drop him, that's the fastest man in the Big Ten, and Steve, maybe, maybe the fastest man in all of college football. That puts Michael Bennett over one. Third down and three. Again, third down conversions, trying to accomplish that. Georgia falls his own number, broke through, and is very close to the first down. Joe Odom wrapped him up. I thought it was funny yesterday in talking with offensive coordinator Brian White. I said, well, what's the difference if Sorgi's in the game? He says, well, we're going to run a lot, a lot less option. <laughs> so here it is, third and three, crucial play. What do they do? They let the freshman run the option. Cuts up field. You saw him limping a little bit as he came back. I think that right ankle is going to be sore all day long, Steve. Here's Sorgi. They'll hand it off to Bell. Gets his hold to the 45 yard line. Swigert on the stop. And picking his hole is something he didn't do a week ago. There were some questionable decisions. The coaching staff told us he could have had against Purdue. Wisconsin now. This is a second and two from the 33 as we start quarter number two from Camp Randall. Hands it off to Picking his holes much better than he did. One week ago, every week is a big game. First down and ten for Sorgi, who's been real impressive. Here to start. And again, it's Chambers. But he's standing down. He's out of the field. I thought he might have stepped out earlier. And Stuart Schweiger eventually bumped him out. I thought he almost stepped out around the 50. But evidently, he stayed in bounds. 31-yard pass play to Chambers. I was thinking the same thing, but again, this is the exact same play that they had just to the other side. Great catch by Chambers. Watch the right foot. Does he go out of bounds? He does not. Good call by the official, or non-call in this case. The six-foot-one, 212-pounder, as you pointed out, Steve, already with five catches. He's putting to, he's putting together a show, and I really think that Brian White, quite frankly, obviously, it should have been ten in a row. Out of the eye now on second down and ten. And on the ground of Bennett, and he's out for a 36-yard line. Schweiger, another stop for him, and we go down to the field to Dave Ryan. All right, Steve, thanks. Another famous Wisconsin alum. Wisconsin's going to be content to run the thing out. Purdue has all three of their timeouts. They should use them here on these running plays. It's Explosive speed. He's got a first down out to the 20. Now, does that change the mindset at all? Well, it certainly does. Obviously, Purdue is stuck now because they're going to get the extra down. I, I would have said his defense just couldn't stop it. Sure, you have put it on the ground again. But Bennett has got some more running in. Bennett's off to the 40 yard line. And maybe it's time for a Wisconsin timeout here. The 36 seconds left on the clock. It was much better in the short yardage. That's where Bennett has struggled, but he gives you the home run opportunity. And now they're going to the pass, and why not? It's Chris Chambers across the middle. Yeah, guys, the Wisconsin coaches were afraid of losing Michael Bennett, not to injury, but to the Olympic team. He qualified for the U.S. Olympic trials this year in California, but decided in June not to go. To concentrate more on his football. That's a good move, I guess, for him. And Wisconsin fans are more than happy he stayed. Davis uses a decoy there. Chris Chambers on the reception. Stuart Schweiger made the stop. The very thing that Joe Tiller was upset with that Dave Ryan documented is the underneath coverage. Here he is on the crossing route, so you can see Schweiger takes a bad angle there. He thought maybe he could have gone to the post and said Schweiger should have run across the field with him. Good job by Sorgi to deliver the ball right on the money, and number 88 is having himself a huge day. First drive, how impressive is that? He's been impressive both three and here's And again, it's a good thing Schweiger got to him, or he could have been gone. He has the potential to break every single run. With the, uh, for the older coaches out there, those that remember the single wing, this is what's known as a cross buck. They pull the offensive lineman, go to the right, and then you give Bennett the ball coming misdirection to the left. And as you pointed out, Steve, once he clears the linebacker,
linebacker. This is an exciting young man. Two weeks ago, Schweigert, though, talking about the defender who made the stop, evidently had a down game, and they said he has to have a big game. Maybe the Big Ten wear and tear is taking its course on the true freshman. Well, last week he came up with an 11-tackle game to lead. Chris Chambers on the reception Chambers there. With Chamber. Dave Alvarez added that, you know, hey, we've had lots of excuses if we wanted to use him. And he's been so impressed by the character of his kids that they haven't relied upon him. They continue to focus, focus here on the boy. And that pass looking sideline to Nick Davis. And they say yes, a completion. Uh, it wasn't no, a completion. Incompletion out of bounds. Actually, Schweigert is the guy that comes up with the ball. You saw the pump fake. Wanted to go out and up with Nick Davis, but Clopton was with him stride for stride. Schweigert does a great job. Might not be an interception, Steve. His left foot came down, and he has the ball. Schweiger does have two interceptions to lead the Purdue defense. And you're right. That looked all afternoon. I want to answer your question about whether or not it was a bad decision to run it out. The answer is no. Thank you. After the foul. And it's Bennett, the ball carrier, cross midfield to the 45, Stuart Schweiger on the stop. Interesting the ebb and flow of this game. It appeared like the Wisconsin offense had run out of gas on that last series, Steve, but now Ignite Field. I wonder if there's something on that turf right there that makes it a little slick, a little extra slick. Quick throw is complete to Nick Davis. He's inside the 10, bounced out of the 12-yard line by Stewart Schweiger, who's making all the tackles for Purdue. But again, in that case, give Sorge credit. He does a nice job of seeing that a corner is coming on the blitz, and Schweiger has to come over and cover him. He goes with the audible. Five, but they put together 48 yards and count. Started at the 38, best field position starting in the afternoon. Now they have to make it pay off. Michael Bennett. Bounce down to the five. Ralph Turner gets the bounce going for it from the five yard line. Sorgi off the play action. It's wide open if he wants it. He passes it. See, that was the play I really thought that they were going to go with on third down, but instead they opted for fourth down. Sorgi is able to buy time. Watch the defender for Pittsburgh, or Purdue rather, who has to make the decision to step up or stay with coverage. Right here comes up. That's actually a pretty nice catch in the back. Schwartz, the other team. Although, unlike the NFL, both teams will get a crack. At least one crack for Purdue. with the football. And we got a coin toss. And we listen in. You gentlemen understand your options? Silver dollar, red for head and tail. Tail is this call. It is a tail. Purdue is one. Purdue has elected to go on defense. Which end of the field? Okay, gentlemen, turn that way, please. I wonder how much that hurts Drew Brees. He's asking. Wisconsin Drew Brees will go on we'll go offense. On first. first down. 25-yard line. Good luck, gentlemen. But Abel and a loss here today could crush those hopes as well. So sudden death, even when it's not sudden death overtime. Here's Jim Sorge. He's been terrific all day. Sorge, corner of the end zone. Double coverage on Chris Chambers, his top receiver all day. Ashante Woodyard leading the parade on defense there. And arguably their top cover man, single coverage, is Ashante Woodward. On the inside, here's the corner route. Woodyard right with it as he has his eyes on the ball, goes up with Chambers. The result is Chambers' turn. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> now, if I'm Purdue, I don't have 11 men up there. I'm wondering about a possible fake. Again, his career long is 54. They're calling it now a 58-yard field goal attempt by Vitaly Pesetsky. High snap. It's blocked. And it's blocked. Happy picks it up and goes. That's it. Touchdown! What a way 
to finish this one. A 27-yard return by Ashante Woodyard. Matt Mitrione made the block on the Pasetsky 57-yard field goal attempt, and the high snap had to hurt that. Certainly, Steve, but again, as everybody is aware of, the, the football cognizant, he know that when you score on the field goal like that, you know it's going to have a low trajectory. It's second-guessing now, but why not go for it? I know it's fourth and a million, but you might as well give it a shot. Instead, the block by Mitrione, the recovery by Woodyard, what a way to end it. Wow. 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 As you mentioned, it's a high snap. Here's the kick. Look at Mitchell. He's right in there. He busts in. The ball wants the bounce. If you saw the other night, Rondé Barber couldn't come up with it. This time, Woodyard does, and he is in for a score. And the small faithful there from West Lafayette are ecstatic. Pasetsky, it's the second time he's had a field goal block this season, but this one costs the ball game. Breeze and Purdue don't even get a chance on offense in overtime and they don't need it. And what great push right up the middle of the field. Just a great job. It was not Mitrione, it was Terrell who ends up with the block. Woodyard picks up the gift. And as you pointed out, Steve Purdue still with the destiny in their own hands. In their 1,000th and first game all time, Purdue gets the victory in a most unusual way. And it's their first win here in Madison since 1988. Let's go down to the field and Dave Ryan. Jerry said it a moment ago, you're still alive and well. Could this have been a more exciting finish? No, not really. We This is our first overtime at Purdue. We've been in, well, no, we lost one at the Outback Bowl, but you know, in an overtime, it's all about energy level. And if you play at a high energy level, you got a chance to make anything happen. Our team certainly did that. You're destined in your own hands. The Rose Bowl is still a possibility. That's gotta be exciting. Just win one more game. That's all Purdue needs to do. Just win one more. Thank you. Congratulations, Steve. All right, Dave, thanks very much. And, of course, this win will give them momentum going into the showdown next week at Purdue against Ohio State. In overtime, Drew Brees and the Purdue offense, they never see the field, and they don't have to. The Boilermakers defeat the Badgers in stunning fashion, 30-24. to 24. Now, for Dave Ryan, Todd Christensen, and our entire crew,